Hey guys, welcome back to the Struggle Bus, where every wheel is an empty triangle. Today we're going to be doing our third and final of the Struggle Bus Basic Basic Rules series. Um, so hopefully you've watched the first two videos in this series, uh, because the, the goal of this video is to kind of bring all that together and show examples of these rules in actual games. So, you know, either you have a good understanding of the rules and, and understand why we follow them, or you have no idea and don't understand the benefits of them, or, or you're somewhere in between. Um, either way, we'll, we'll be putting these rules uh, into practice in these three games. Before we get to the games, though, I want to elaborate a little bit on, on rule number three. So let's, let's bring that rule back. So in my previous video, I, I didn't really do a great job of fully explaining rule number three in terms of not playing early first and second line moves, uh, because there are plenty of variations that we do see where we are playing uh, second line moves. And so I just want to get into that a little bit. So the important thing to, to keep in mind here is we're looking to get our group settled and or alive uh, early in the game so that they can't be attacked later. And so you will see a lot of second line moves in some variations, but they're done to make sure that your group is alive. So just looking at a, a couple well-known Josekis here, after we get the four corners, when we approach uh, the 4-4 four -four with the Knight's approach, white can back off, and then black will sometimes slide in, and this is a second line move. But this is done to get alive here, while also threatening to take the corner away, right? And so then white will typically defend and black will back off here. So while d18 is an early second line move, it's done to get this group nice and strong so that it can't be attacked later. Similarly, if white were to take the 3-3 here and black were to block and then do the Hane variation, white gets pushed down to the second line, which again is early, but white is doing this so that he can get alive so that the group cannot be attacked later. So in this situation, white plays three second line moves, but again, that's to get his group alive. So there's a difference between playing moves, you know, the second line moves that are early to get your group alive versus then playing a move like here, where this would be considered too early because both those groups are settled. So I just wanted to give that example uh, before we went into the games. Um, but with that said, we can now get back into the games. With the three games that I have, one, the first one that we're going to go over, uh, both players are breaking the rules left and right. The second game we have, we have both players following the rules. And then the most important of the three, the third and final game, we have one player who's following the rules and one player who's breaking the rules, which really shows uh, how much of an advantage you can get if you, if you follow the Struggle Bus Basics basic rules. Uh, so with that, let's get right into the first game. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to play through the game nice and slow so you can see the moves. And what I'd like you to do is, is take a look at the moves and figure out which ones break the rules and what rule is being broken uh, with the move. And then afterwards, we'll, we'll go back and we'll go through it together. And while you're watching this game, enjoy the relaxing sounds of a comforting campfire. So now that we've all had a chance to take a look at this game, I want to go through looking at it just applying the Struggle Bus Basic Basic rules. 
uh, not looking for other mistakes with reading or whatnot, just applying those rules to the moves and seeing when they get broken. So jumping right in, you'll notice that the first four moves, everything is fine. They are both following rules uh, one and two in terms of playing in the corners and balancing third or fourth line stones. And then while this is a weird approach, it's fine, does not break any rules, doesn't break any rules, this is fine. The first rule that really breaks it is this rule, where we're dropping to the first line, which is just too early here. White then goes and, and stays on the outside, which is correct, and black follows and white follows, and that's fine, and all those are fine. And then here, we break rule number three again, which is playing uh, a first line move too early. Uh, I'm sure white did this to threaten the two stones, uh, but those stones aren't worth saving because of rule, every, rule number five, don't save every stone. So this move right here breaks rule number five. Those stones were not worth saving. In this situation, it would have been better for black to potentially turn because if white then goes after the stones and black Ataris and white captures, black can then go get a big move. And this is a much better position for giving up two stones, which is why we don't want to save every stone. But black did save the stones, and which breaks that rule. So then white pushes on top, and black approaches the other corner. Again, does so a little strange, but doesn't break any of our, any of our rules. Uh, and then white goes and plays this move. Uh, and this breaks a number of rules, right? This is playing on the first line, which is too early. White is doing this again to, to threaten these two stones, uh, but those stones aren't worth saving right now. Unfortunately, black does respond, and that still doesn't save the two stones. White could immediately play here, and the stones still die. Uh, but either way, we're, we're saving, we're saving uh, stones that aren't important, which breaks rule. Number five, white then responds on the bottom. Black extends down. White extends. Black jumps to make a base. All this is fine. And then white plays an extension from his wall and also presses on black's group. Black then gently breaks rule number one by not playing in one of the large sides. He does play on a side, uh, but it would have been better to to play on a side that is a little more open, like this, this right side, the bottom, or the honey and the top to help secure that. Uh, but he does play a side here. Uh, white then goes and immediately breaks rule number four and attaches to a weak stone. So in this situation, unfortunately, the reason that, that this attachment is bad in this particular game, the variation is pretty complicated. I'm not going to get into it. Um, but in this case, it is better for white to either just jump out or lean onto the stone. Um, but either way, white attached to the stone, black extended as you would expect, white blocks, black on is underneath, and these are all kind of forced exchanges now, but now black gets life pretty easily, um, but white does get a good wall. Unfortunately, white breaks two rules here by playing too early on the second line, which breaks rule number three, and ignored the corners before sides before center, uh, which breaks rule number one. We have plenty of corners that are still available to be invaded, either three threes, or he could approach on either side to help. Uh, to help get a side. So unfortunately, this, this move broke two rules, uh, and that gives Black the opportunity to, to correctly play and go get one of the sides. And then we have, unfortunately, White making yet another mistake of playing too early of a second line move while trying to capture meaningless stones. Uh, and then Black captures this stone to save the two stones that weren't important, which also breaks rule number five. Lots, lots of breaking of rule number five here. Uh, and then white captures, which breaks rule number three, which is to avoid early first and second line moves, while also breaking rule number one, which is corners before sides, before centers. And that's kind of the crux of all of this, is we're playing all these small moves when white could be doing something like approaching this corner. But instead, white captures this and gives black the opportunity yet again to take a big move and go after a side. Uh, unfortunately, Black plays probably the most egregious move we've seen yet and connects these stones, which is playing too early of a second line move uh, while also ignoring the corners and, and sides that are that are still open. So that's where we're going to stop on, on this game uh, to kind of showcase just how easily it is to really break these rules. And it's possible that, that this game resonates with a lot of 
uh, our viewers who are are coming here to to help learn to to understand these rules. This this may resemble a lot of the games that you guys play, which is exactly why we're we're looking at this. And so the next game is going to be the opposite of this, where we're going to see two players who are following the rules really well, and you're going to notice just how different the the play is. So let's go on to the second game. So here's our second game, and I'm not going to go over too much with it because they, they simply do a good job of showing proper use of the rules. And so we're just going to play through the first 35 moves or so to show you what we'd expect a, a game to look like when the rules are being followed. So we get all four corners, then we start approaching the sides. We're doing some typical corner variations, uh, and you'll notice that we're, we're getting sides, we're getting corners, we're balancing third and fourth line stones, doing everything we would expect to do if we are following the rules. Both players are, are doing doing a really good job of this. Uh, we're now kind of tran already transitioning into, into middle game, and so at that point we are going to start getting towards the center, even though on the right side still a little open, and White sees that and decides to, to firm that up and then plays the final uh, move that we're going to, to look at in this one. Uh, so you'll notice no second line moves were played, no first line moves were played, and it's just good balance and good control for both players over the board. Uh, and you can tell by looking at this that this is going to turn into a good, a good game with solid playing. Uh, and, and comparing this to the last game, you know, there, there are obvious differences. It's, cl it's clear that these players are stronger, but none of these moves are, are too cryptic or hard to understand. They all make sense when viewed in the context of following the Struggle Bus Basics basic rules, which is why if you start to follow them, your games are going to start looking like this. And if your opponents aren't following them, you're going to get some pretty easy wins, which is what the next game is going to showcase pretty firmly. So let's get to that game to show you why we really care about these rules. So this final game is really going to show the benefits of following the Struggle Bus Basic Basic rules, uh, if you're, and especially if your opponent isn't following them. Uh, so it's worth noting, White gets in trouble pretty quickly in this game um, and ends up losing a fight, which is probably big enough to win the game by itself for Black. Um, but especially after this fight, um, White's play really breaks down in terms of following the rules, while Black does a pretty a, a pretty good job of, of following them. So the, the first few moves are typical. We're going for the four corners, take, uh, and then Black takes an extension, and White immediately jumps in. And there's nothing wrong with this. Um, you, you know, there are certainly other options available, um, but invading this, this large extension is, is fine. Uh, black blocks, white pushes, black hanes, white makes this ugly shape, um, and black extends. And so far, you, you can kind of see that, again, like I said, white gets in trouble pretty pretty early, um, but things aren't terrible until about here, uh, where white then gets two groups that can kind of be split. Now, in this situation here, black could have chosen to capture these two stones in a ladder. Um, but there are reasons why, why Black wouldn't want to do that. And in this case, Black sees this as the better option to help uh, solidify the, the right side. Um, and this is where things really start going downhill for White. White needs to recognize that these two stones are not worth saving and that he should be following rule number five that says, don't save all stones. Um, but he does not follow that, and he is now determined to save this these group of stones as well. And ultimately, this is what's going to cause him to, to lose this fight here. Um, but even after that is when things continue downhill. You know, now he has two two groups that he has to deal with, and, and he won't be able to, to fix both of them, and he chooses to, to save the larger group. Um, and here, Black doesn't even choose to fully kill this white group. Uh, and instead goes and takes a side. Uh, and White is determined to save these stones. And again, they're still not worth saving. And so Black's just ignoring this and just taking this large side while White's group still is, un is still in trouble. And 
uh, Black just continues playing his plan. Uh, Black goes and, and gets a, a, uh, a living group, and then White overextends a little bit, and Black cuts, uh, because White is not strong enough to be to be doing this. And so at the end of this, White has now lost the marked group. And yeah, the fighting was a little complicated there. Um, but it's this is actually the part of the game that I really want to focus on. Because uh, White's still choosing to save these stones and just needs to recognize that he needs, he needs to let them go. Uh, but ultimately, Black does finally capture the stones. White forces him to capture. Uh, and then we get some exchanges here. Black jumps into a corner. Uh, and then White goes to, to secure life here. Um, and we get this exchange, which is fine. And Black comes back. And this is, this is an early second line move. But this fully secures life for Black. So this doesn't break the rule that says no early second line moves. Unfortunately for White, this response does break the rule because white is already alive here and black's already alive here. So white should be looking at either, you know, going after a corner or a side with an extension, uh, an extension, something other than a second line move. It's just too early in the game for it. And so here, black gets a free move, right? This is what happens when your opponents don't follow the rules is you get free moves. And so in this case, black gets his free Tanuki that white should have gotten. And then white again plays a pretty early second line move here. And now black gets another free move and goes and grabs the, the final corner. And so again, this fight kind of dictated things for a bit, and, you know, and black was in a good position. But white had chances to come back in this game. And he just completely gave them up and gave Black two free moves, which Black used to get these two marked stones. And this game is now just completely unwinnable for White. And so it can happen that quickly when you don't follow the rules, uh, because a lot of the times when you don't follow the rules, you're giving your opponents free turns. When you're saving meaningless stones, your opponent gets a free move. When you're capturing meaningless stones, your opponent gets a free move. When you're playing an early second or first line move, your opponent gets a free move. And that's really what it comes down to, is if you follow the rules, you're going to be taking the big points on the board. And if you don't follow the rules, you're letting your opponent get the big points on the game. And it's possible that in your games, both of you are breaking the rules, right? And so you're not seeing the repercussions for, for not following the rules. But I promise you, if you follow the rules and your opponents aren't, you're just going to start getting all these free moves and you're going to get easy wins and you're going to rank up pretty quickly. So that concludes our three video series on the Struggle Bus Basics Basic Rules. So hopefully you've enjoyed the videos and learned a thing or six um, and have some new tools that you can use uh, in, in games that you're playing. And while it's never that easy, I, I do promise if you follow these rules and your opponents don't, you're going to find yourself getting a lot of free moves and a lot of free wins. So hopefully this is something that can legitimately help out your game. Um, and if not, hopefully you at least enjoyed the videos. I'm going to be continuing the Struggle Bus Basic series with uh, individual videos going over various topics. And so we might come back to some series later on. Uh, but for the next few videos, we'll just be looking at individual, individual topics. Uh, so hopefully that will be something that can also help you out in a slightly shorter format. For those of you who enjoy this style of how I present information for the game and are looking for reviews and or lessons, uh, I am available. My information uh, is listed below. Or if you just want to get back to the channel, it's a great way to, to do that as well. Otherwise, uh, thank you for coming out for another ride in the Struggle Bus where every wheel is an empty triangle. I'll see you guys next time.